Hello everybody. So I recently went on the Corn website and I was quite disappointed to find that they're regurgitating these sorts of statistics going around about um, agriculture, whereby um, people are saying that, you know, a, a product like corn, for instance, has a 40 times lower carbon footprint than, say, beef and a six times lower carbon footprint than chicken because of this issue of methane. Now, this is like something that really sort of got my back up or that really troubled me for um, a lot of the time when I was um, first introduced to this idea, you know, this classic cow farts argument, right? You know, stinky cows um, uh, emitting lots of methane into the atmosphere. No, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have that anymore? And I'm just tempted to think, like, re really, the reason why this isn't a problem at all, why um, no amount of cattle farming really contributes to the greenhouse effect remotely it comes down to a, a confluence of various different things on the first in in the first instance very simply the food they eat has already sequestered rather a lot of carbon dioxide so for that reason if it's emitting um, a, a, a carbon equivalent which is what they do they sort of lump methane in with this issue of carbon which is annoying in itself because um, I'll get onto the reason why that is in, in due course but um yeah, so um, all like grass, silage, uh, maize silage, so on and so forth, the stuff that cows eat, um, uh, even grains, right, um, all that stuff, that is sequestering carbon. Um, in the case of straw, which is used for their bedding, um, that is obviously sequestering carbon as well from, say, barley, if it's barley straw. Um, that's, you know, and that's, um, that's the sort of carbon sequestered that it doesn't exactly get burned. At the end of it, it does get um well disposed of, but I mean, yeah, it's um well it gets put back on fields ultimately. I, I just yeah, it does, and um as fertilizer and releases methane in the process of doing that. So all this this is connected to like um like a natural cycle of um crop growth, carbon sequestration via that, then feeding to cattle. They emit methane. I bet it's zero sum if that's taken into consideration. And I don't think any of these scientists, so called, have even thought of that, really. I mean, I imagine like loads of agricultural scientists may well have thought of this or know this just like, you know, intuitively, being like, well, there's carbon in their food. <laughs> and um and then the, the the corn people bring up this issue of water. Oh, it uses so much less water than livestock. Or no. the water statistics. This is the most annoying thing. Man. Uh, one of the most annoying things when I found out about this is so-called green water. You know what green water is? That's, that means the water content of their food. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh, Jesus Christ. The water bound up in the grass that they consume, the silage they consume. What a load of bollocks this is! And um, yeah, uh, moving on. Like, and another thing. Like, um, they, I think that they're probably also messing up the statistics in terms of um, like they probably haven't performed like a proper regression analysis to see how much methane uh, in like um summed up is actually being contributed to the atmosphere as a result of dairy farming. I just suspect, or farming in general, um, livestock farming I should say, um, they probably haven't taken into consideration, you know, like whether or not there's been a net increase in terms of atmospheric methane. I don't think they have. Because um, methane, there's a lot less methane in the atmosphere than there is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That's the other bit. And um, while methane is a 40 times more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide as all these publications love to remind us you know and all these pundits for um like these supposed climate activists and so on and um love to remind us for this oh it's 40 percent uh more effective greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide but yeah there's way less of it in the atmosphere the concentration is far lower and carbon dioxide is still uh, about a six times greater contributor to the greenhouse effects than methane is. So this needs to also be accounted for. And uh, then again, we don't have the satellite data from uh, wetlands and tropical 
uh, rainforests which emit loads of methane. Um, we don't have like the satellite data over Africa and the Congo and this sort of thing to accurately gauge levels of atmospheric methane in the Congo. Uh, and there's some, been lots of research done in the Amazon and it seems like they're homing in on more refined statistics there. But, um, you know, then there's like, well, what are you going to do also if you remove agriculture, animal agriculture, so called, or livestock farming, I should say? Like, well, if you like take your average dairy farm and like remove all the cows from it and rewild it, it'll probably turn into a wetland, a swamp, or something, or it will come overgrown. Um, swamps and wetlands, of course, release loads of methane, you know. Um, at least as much as dairy cows do, if not more, because like they're not consuming anything that's been sequestering carbon, and um, uh, then there's yeah, then then say if it's overgrown, then there's um decomposing plant matter um in the sort of undergrowth that's been rewilded or just left as like scrubbing or waste ground, more like. Which is what I imagine the rewilding would sort of amount to, and yeah, all the like decomposing uh, plants and stuff, methane emitted for that reason. <coughs> so yeah, I mean, digging something up out of the ground, um, a, a fossil fuel and burning it—that makes like all right, fine. That would contribute to the greenhouse effect. I can't deny that, but I mean, yeah, this issue of methane. This is squiffy. This is screwy. Might be silly as hell as well, <laughs> and um, it might actually be a, like a, quite a dangerous distraction from the fact that we're continuing to burn fossil fuels at a rate that's far too high, and that you know it's kind of like this carbon defeatist attitude. Like, oh, we'll never be able to wean ourselves off fossil fuels, or oh, we'll just um, you know allow the climate to keep going, and we'll. Um, We'll point the finger at farmers, and um, that'll, you know, that'll um, to absolve ourselves possibly of any culpability so far as our carbon impact is concerned in the future. And oh, I don't have to give up my car. I don't have to give up my um, my technology or anything else that uses electricity and hence carbon. But, but, Hence fossil fuels and hence emits carbon dioxide. And um, oh, I, I didn't need to offset my carbon this year because uh, all farmers are doing so it's crap. Methane, yeah. It's like, huh? No, <laughs> that'd be foolish. Jesus. Whereas actually, this issue of carbon sequestration, as I've mentioned before in other in other then in other videos, is far more straightforward than we'd like to imagine. I read an article about this the other day, not that anyone's read it or shared it or anything, because, you know, why would anyone share or read anything on medium.com if it's not like, you know, oh, uh, six signs to watch out for in a in a man, or six ways of knowing your man's jealous or something. Like, I'll put that on medium, that'll get like a bazillion claps, you know, like five claps, 5,000 claps straight away. Oh, we'll share, share, share that, like. Ugh. Like like a decent point raised like, like using hemp for carbon sequestration and regenerating soil as well, and binding soil particles and removing heavy metals and uh, uh, b like fixing nitrogen in the soil. Also, like, I'll just ignore that and how we can like sequester um, thir uh, thirty tons of CO two per hectare of hemp. You know, we've got um, six billion hectares of degraded farmland, hence that's a, a total carbon sequestration potential there of what, I suppose like 90 gigatons, is it? Which is way more than we need to sequester. So in fact the only problem associated with using hemp for that reason is that we may grow too much of it. As well, therefore we use it as biofuel. But, oh, what, we could do that? Uh, I just like the oil companies could not sponsor this crappy science to do with farming and methane. But that's a bit of conspiracy theory, isn't it? Thank you everyone for watching. Bye bye. I love you lots. See you soon.